Hi everyone, welcome back to our series of Azure Active Directory and in this video I'm going to talk about device management, one of the most important topic that you should know about Azure Active Directory. Now if you're watching this series from the beginning in the last video we have discussed about groups and since we have covered users groups now the next the most important thing is devices. So the agenda for this particular video will be knowing what is device management, why exactly you need a device identity and types of device identities in Azure Active Directory. Now, if we talk about an ideal scenario wherein you have a on-prem network and you are also allowing users to bring their own devices to access portal.office.com or any of the application that's been protected by Azure Active Directory. It can be Office 365 or some other application that you have added or any gallery application. That means with the proliferation of devices getting increased like anything and making users productive from everywhere we are allowing the users to use all kind of devices so that they can get access to the protected resource of our enterprise but if we talk about the corporate network you have given the user a device which is domain joint but just think about this in a nutshell that when a device is domain joined in Active Directory, there is a computer object which is created. That means your directory management is actually allowing you to manage the identity of that particular machine. So this is a machine which I have domain joined to conceptswork.com and if I go to computer, I can see a device object. And what I can do is I can control the attributes, I can control the membership, and I can do whatever I want with this particular device object. But the very first fundamental which we have to understand is we need the device identity. Now, all this is happening because you have initially domain joined this machine. That means there is a reference object for this particular machine that exists in your Active Directory. But if we compare this with a scenario wherein we are giving the users the privilege to bring their own devices, what all we can add, okay? So the first thing that I would like to let you know, guys, that if I am allowing a particular user to bring his or her own device, and if I can get that device registered in Azure Active Directory so that the Azure Active Directory has a reference for that particular object, I will be able to provide single sign-on on that particular device as well. So though it is a personal device, but with the help of the configuration which Azure AD offers, the users will be able to experience single sign-on. Now understand this, that when you were domain joining your machine in your corporate network, the device object was getting created in your Active Directory. In the similar way, when your users will register device in Azure Active Directory, there will be a device object created for that particular device. Now, this is the first fundamental of device identity management that in order to begin with any decision-making process that you have to do, likewise conditional access, there are two kind of devices with which you can implement, hybrid Azure AD joint and compliant devices. The first and the foremost thing that you need is device identity. That means Azure AD should know which device is coming or the user has logged into what kind of device and what kind of application a particular user is trying to access. Now, when a machine is domain joined, a computer object is created, but when a machine is registered or Azure AD joined, the device object for that personal device gets created in Azure Active Directory. But the question comes, what could be the purpose of doing all this? The first thing, from a user experience perspective, you will be able to configure a single sign-on. The users will get SSO on their personal laptop if they get registered to Azure Active Directory. Now, 
this is one of the feature there are n number of configuration that can be done but i'm just trying to explain the fundamental of device identity management and what add-on it brings to you as admin or what add-on it brings to a user and how easy the seamless sign-on process or authentication process works in a nutshell so from admin perspective you have a device identity which you can control that means you can either enable or disable or you can delete that device identity so likewise i've shown you a computer object in active directory in the similar way there is a feature wherein you can open this same kind of identity in azure active directory as well so for that what I'll do is I'll switch to my machine where I have opened portal.azure.com and I will show you some of the device identities. So as you can see that these machines are getting registered as hybrid Azure AD join. This is one of the class or one of the type of identities available for the devices which are getting registered in Azure Active Directory. So likewise, you have a device object in your AD. In the similar way, whenever any device is registered or joined to Azure Active Directory, the particular device gets created in Azure Active Directory as a reference. Now, if we talk about what will be the basic steps that you can take from a managed identity perspective or from managed device perspective, the first thing is you can customize device identities. That means what I can go to Azure Active Directory and I can either enable, disable or delete this. Now, every action that you take here has its own outcome, which I will be discussing with every object type as we move on with this series. As of now, just understand what is the basic foundation of device management. Now, since you have multiple types of device identities, what you can actually do is you can create conditional access policies to either allow or block access on a specific type of device. Now, what do I mean by this? That this process of getting device registered to Azure Active Directory is one of the basic fundamental of conditional access, or you can say it's a foundation of device based conditional access. Now, as I said before, a device can either be registered or joined to Azure Active Directory. And this leads us to understand what are the types of device identities in Azure Active Directory. Now, the first one that you see here is Azure AD registered. That means though there will be a device object created in Azure Active Directory, but the users will sign in with their personal email or local accounts on that particular machine and this gets applied to Windows 10 iOS Android and Mac OS whereas the other category is Azure AD joined wherein once a device is Azure AD joined any user from that particular directory can sign in on that particular machine by using the corporate identity let's say user at the red concepts work.com or user one at the red concepts work.com this concept applies to only windows 10 the last and the most important one is hybrid azure ad joint devices wherein your machine is domain joined as well as azure ad joined and this is something which is available with conditional access so when you try to configure any conditional access policy you will get two options over there hybrid azure ad joined and compliant device compliant device is a tag which has been added to a particular uh, device or you can say a, a value that's been added to a particular device and this is something which is done by a mdm solution offered by microsoft which is microsoft intune but in a nutshell for conditional access you have two type of devices available the first one will be hybrid azure ad joined and the other one will be compliant devices of Intune. Now this was a small introductory about the device identity management and why you need device identity to take any action. In the next video, I will be specifically talking about Azure 
80 registered devices. So a quick summary, we talked about device management, why you need device identity, the most important thing, and types of identities in Azure Active Directory. So if you have learned something new, please feel free to subscribe. If you have any query, feedback, or suggestion, please feel free to reach me at learnconceptsworth at gmail.com. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.